welcome back to Gypsy Pay Creations. Today's video is going to focus on a new ingredient in my recipe called Vanilla Color Stabilizer. I bought a bottle of it from Brambleberry to experiment with. And what it is, it's a liquid that you add to soap with a fragrance that has a high vanillin content to it. And what vanilla contents in fragrances can do is they can turn your soap either a tan or a dark brown. It just kind of depends on how much percentage of vanilla is in your fragrance. So I'm going to make a bubblegum scented soap today that has a small percentage of vanilla in it and I'm going to add the vanilla color stabilizer to it and see if it discolors my soap or hopefully it doesn't. Let's go. My oils have been melted down and they have been sitting at room temperature. So has my lye solution that I've added some titanium dioxide and sodium lactate to. And we're just going to mix everything up here. mix everything in one bowl this time which I'm really excited about not making as much mess and having as many dishes to clean so I'm gonna keep everything in this bucket and I'm going to start with my color here I'm using some rose pink from nurture soap and when you mix that with the titanium dioxide I'm hoping that I get a light pink color and not anything too bright you know more like a bubble gum so let's just add a little bit Mix it up and see where I am. I'm going to scrape down the sides here because you can see a lot of the color is sticking to the sides and probably to the bottom. You want everything to be well incorporated here. Pretty pink. Alright, so the fragrance I'm using, like I said, is Bubblegum. It is by Naturals by Nana, or Nana, um, Bubblegum Fragrance. It has about 3.3% of vanilla in it. This is the vanilla color stabilizer that I got from Brambleberry. And the typical usage for this is 1.1, so 1 to 1 ratio um, of fragrance to the vanilla color stabilizer. I'm probably not going to go with that ratio because I mentioned earlier that the bubblegum doesn't have a very high content of vanilla in it, so I'm probably going with half the bottle, I think. Yell at me for not properly measuring everything, but yeah. Alright, so I've poured that in with the fragrance. Also, I'm hoping that the pink helps as well hide with hiding any discolored tendencies. Alright, so I'm going to pour this in here and give it a little mix with my spatula. And this smells just like bubble gum. Mm, like pink bubble gum. Alright, so I was kind of debating on what exactly to put inside of the soap. I was thinking about like little soap balls that would look like gumballs in there. And then I decided I don't like the, that when I cut it, I can't really tell where the soap gumballs are. And that you might not get all the colors inside of it. So what I've done is I've taken some soap and I've just put it through a cheese grater and it actually even kind of looks like cheese. Different colors here, some blues, some purples, and some yellows. And I'm going to pour this into my soap here. And I want to make sure that this is at the right consistency because I want this stuff to be suspended in my solution. This could also be considered soap confetti. This is 
how you make soap confetti. It, confetti is you just take your soap and you run it against a cheese grater. And it comes out like this so that when I pour this into my soap and I cut it, it will have like little specks of color in it. And I think I like that idea a lot better. I don't think I'm going to use all of this. So this can be used in different soaps. It doesn't just have to be bubble gum. You can use your imagination and, and put it in anything that you like. So I'm going to dump this in here. I don't want it to all stick together, so I'm kind of prying them apart as I toss them in. Let's give that a nice little whirl. And then we can pour it into the mold. That's fine. I really hope this doesn't all sink to the bottom. Very easy. The easiest thing ever. Only problem I have here is I think I miscalculated a little bit on when you add things to your soap, like soap in bed, you have to cut your recipe down a little bit so that, you know, your mold isn't overflowing like this. So give me a second to clean this up. I've cleaned up my mess and I am ready to pipe the top of my soap. I've whipped up some soap topping here in a nice tidal wave blue, again with some titanium dioxide. And then I'm going to start off by spraying with some isopropyl alcohol on the top of this. And get started. See if it sticks. Three. I'm going to do three cross. Just like so. So I think the next recipe I'm going to do after this bubblegum one is a coffee scented soap. And in that one I'm, I'm not going to use the vanilla stabilizer in it and I'm actually going to just let the soap discolor to brown since it's going to be a coffee soap and then you guys can see what it looks like when you don't add vanilla stabilizer to fragrances with vanillin in it. I think I'm also going to put some scrub in it, like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, put coffee grinds inside of it so that it has a scrubbing effect to it. I'm, I'm, I can't think of the word. Anyway, that one's next. I think I'm on, like, this whole food kick of making soaps that <laughs> are food-oriented. Just not enough for me. I need more soap on here. And the soap embeds I made here with some melt and pour are supposed to look like gumballs. Try to stick them on here because now that I've put all of this icing on top, and I'm gonna stick these heavy soap balls on it. <laughs> Let's see. When I bought these specific mold for these gumballs, I thought medium was going to be a good size. And as you can see, medium is actually pretty large. So I think I'm gonna have to go back and buy these small. think it was going to be this big which is fine it just means bigger bars for you guys all right so then what I've got here is some sprinkles some pretty little pink sprinkles I wanted to put on top of here does that not make soap look yummy? <laughs> it's 
almost reminds me of cotton candy. So I could probably do a soap lo looks like this that could be cotton candy. And then the final touch, glitter. A little bit of snowflake sparkle glitter on here. looks good to me it's so pretty and last but not least you want to spray again with your isopropyl alcohol so I will let this sit for 24 to 48 hours I will unmold it and we will cut it with my brand new soap cutter and fingers crossed that there is no discoloration here we go we have the intro I don't get to talk it's just bubblegum soap these people know what I'm talking about on here and All those right. people have seen the pictures. All right. I'm just cutting soap. So the inside's supposed to be confetti-like. <clears throat> Let's see if it's confetti-like. Yeah. It sure does look like confetti to me. Take a look here. Yourself. Paper towel. Paper towel. This one's a little difficult because I'm going to probably accidentally cut one of these stupid end bits. <laughs> you gotta be very specific, don't you? There we go. This is my first soap with glycerin rivers in it. What is it, glycerin? Oh, yeah. Those little veiny things, that's, veinies. that's from using fragrances that have vanilla in it and then trying to use that color, the vanilla color stabilizer. So, that is a side effect. Side effects? Oh, hello. It smells really good. It smells like fresh, fruity, pink bubble gum. That's what it looks like. It kind of has like a bubblegum slash cotton candy look to it. I am <laughs> 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 not happy with the glycerin rivers. I'm really not. I don't like them. Maybe that'll uh even so, out. So the lesson of this is, do you want glycerin rivers or do you want brown soap? <laughs> right. Still quite soft. It smells fantastic though. It's like bubble gum and kind of has a scent of uh, like a like an orange cream cone, cream sickle sort of flavor going on. Fruity. Very like um, carnivalish, I guess. Or not carnival. I guess like a street fair or something like that kind of smell. So these are going to be really big bars. Yeah, there are some big bars. I do like the colors though. Like the top of it's really cute. It reminds me of cotton candy. Maybe? Yeah, that's what I just said. I said it kind of reminds me of cotton candy. Last one. That was it. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Well, that was fun. So, there you have it. Still a perfectly fine bar soap, I promise. Even with the glycerin rivers in it. Some people actually like them. I personally hate them. They can happen in anyone's soap, whether you're a beginner or if you're someone who is professional making soap. It happens. They're actually better for the bar, for your skin, and some people think they add personality. I hate them. I hate it. This is not the look I was going for, people. Um, <laughs> it looks like alien brains or already been chewed bubblegum. But again, 
it's perfectly fine to use. It does not ruin the bar soap. I do not have to throw this away. It is still going to be for sale in my Etsy shop, which I will leave the link down below. Things that cause the glycerin rivers can be the titanium dioxide that's used for coloring, um, the fragrance, how hot the soap heats up, or like the additive they use with the color stabilizer. These are all factors that can cause glycerin rivers. So, not going to be the last time I get these, I'm sure. First time, but not the last time. So if you guys like this video and if you learned something from it, please like. If you want to see more soap videos, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. Until next time, smell you later.